Oh, hi, world. This is part two of the room review. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the final half of the movie as well as my review and afterthoughts and what the critics and reviewers said about The Room. Now enjoy the spectacular movie called The Room. I did not hurt her. I did not. You are tearing me apart. Scene. I bet you. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Toodaloo. They don't pay for their item, they just sit. With the uh, shaving, apparently, Greg, the main actor, didn't want to shave his face, but Tommy Wazoo really wanted him to shave his face. No one knows why, but there was a shaved face. So there's that. Like cheesecake. No, no, no. Everyone wants cheesecake. I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? <laughs> can't talk about just, it. How's your sex life? Mark, don't Come on, Johnny's gonna go do school. it. You just said she's one of a bitch. <laughs> Sorry for the cussing. And there they go again. Mark, don't do it. Don't let her. <sighs> the post production moans. Mwah. Mwah. Get hot in here. Woo! The jogging scene, I guess. Why do you have a football? If you're gonna go jogging, why do you have weight lifting gloves on? Turn to a game porn? Wow, so uh, you gonna be ready? How do you mean that? I'm always ready for you. Oh! Way too long to put it strong, guy. Come on now. What was he doing here? Uh, he just brought by some pickup. <laughs> why? I don't know. Zipper? Shirt was off. Zipper what down. What do you think they were doing? If he can't give me what I want, somebody else will. Ooh. I don't want to talk about it. But you were just talking. People are going to be getting here. trying to ruin my party. <laughs> With the pillow? I can ruin a part of the pillow. Ball's gone. Gloves are gone. It's not jogging. Now like a sprint. Now he's wearing glasses. <laughs> when they were jogging up the stairs, they had some dialogue about meeting somewhere, even though you can't really hear the dialogue. They talk about something, but they're literally jogging up the stairs, and their lips aren't moving at all. ADR, post-production, yeah, fantastic. I wish I had a black wig. You are sweeping the smallest area for like hours. Time for that broom away. They're sweeping nothing now. Come on, girl. Where did Chris R go? That's awkward. Awkward birthday song. Hey, you remembered. But he doesn't drink. Now he doesn't drink. Now he's about to drink some champagne. That was a weird music cut to the skyline and back to the party. That was a weird that was a weird transition right there. Happy birthday, music of the skyline, and then back to the party. That was that was weird. What kind of watch is he wearing? Wait, is that a bat like a kid's bathroom watch? Michelle's boyfriend? Watch that. What is Michelle's boyfriend watch at the birthday party scene? Someone tell me what that is, please. Okay, now they're all going outside. What's going on here? Oh, who's this guy? Leave your stupid Matt. comments in your pocket. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. You understand what you're like doing? That. So where's this trans to it now? So you got caught? Wait, what? Where are they at now? He's on the roof? Hey, everybody. I have an announcement to make. We're expecting. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, she's pregnant? When is the baby due? There is no baby. What? What are you talking about? There's no baby now. 
What? Now they're going back inside. Why don't they just bring the cake outside? <laughs> That's random. You are. Shut up. Oh. What are you doing? What, what's going on here? You really don't know, do you? Maybe I know more than you think I do, Mark. Shit, all right? What do you want from me, huh? Stop. So, hour 24 minute in. That's an interesting. So that push at hour 24, according to the book, Greg's, Greg, the real wife guy, was not expecting that hard of a shove. So him hitting that table was actually him not expecting that shove being that hard. So that was a real reaction. That was a quick apology. Wait, they're doing that at the party? Being that sensual at the party? It's not obvious. What are you doing? And there you go. Leave her alone, man. She doesn't want to talk to you. Here Since we when go. do you give me orders? This means to change her mind about you. I think you should leave right now, Mark. Don't spoil it. We were just having fun. These transitions are weird. Don't worry about it, man. Don't touch me, motherfucker. Get out. Woo! Stop it! Stop leave it! Leave her alone. You two are acting like children. <coughs> Bitch. There we go. You keep your girl satisfied, she will come to me. Get out of my house. I kill you. I bring him in front of me. Stop it. I kill you, you bastard. You'll kill me if you try. Man. If he strangled me, you're not good. You, you're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Frey, shut up. Shut up. Betrayed me. I fed up with this world. So these transitions of outside, like party, fight, shake hands, outside, dancing, another I fight. The kitchen, sweetheart. Another so outside the Disney store. Now they're back upstairs. Like these transitions of outside it's worlds make no sense. Oh, door locked. A lot of candles. There's like you come out now, Johnny. She's gone. An ungodly amount of candles. In a few minutes, bitch. <laughs> Who are you calling a bitch? You and your stupid mother. Oh, I thought it froze. Who are you talking to? Woo! But the movies. Nobody. We'll see about that. Yeah, go to the recording. Go. We'll see about that. Yeah, we will. Put it in. I gave you seven years of my life. That was five. I want your body. I mean, I I'll give it to Tommy. Ah! Oh. That was dramatic throw against the wall. I mean, Johnny's anger and sadness in the movie resonates. You kind of see in his face. Maybe that's his resting, sad, angry face. I mean, I can see it. I, you feel for him. Oh, is this where he like tears the apartment now? Get angry. Turn to the Hulk. Got okay, another beauty shot. Just, just for the heck of it. Bear up. Dude, he's strong. He chunked that TV. It was a two. Touch everything, man. Everything. Just throw everything. Gun in there? Why? Why is this happening to you? Why? Why, is, why does he have Chris Hart's oh. gun? Johnny's not waking up. Is he dead? Yes! Yes, he's dead! Okay, he actually committed suicide. Oh my god. Just his forehead. Oh my god. Way too much blood. I lost him, but I still have you, right? Why right? is there blood? Some of that blood poison makes no sense, though. Have me? Ooh, exactly. He never had me. Yes! <laughs> the cops come. Yeah, they, they're, they're, well, I don't know why there's blood way over there. Like underneath his armpit, like near his stomach. That's. Oh, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Stop breathing, Tommy. I see his shirt moving. Oh, that's it. Okay, the mo uh, movie's done. Yeah, um, alright, uh, the room's done. Let's give you my reaction to the room of these highlights. Let's move. Written and directed by. Alright, that's the room. Now with my review. 
Man, I wish I would have a black wig right now to try to do my best impression of Johnny. But here we go. I did not hit her. This is bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Chase. What's up, Tommy? Looks like you're still fixing on the room, aren't you? Oh, what you doing? Oh, this? No, it's a movie script I wrote called The Managers. It's a very, very loosely based story of what I did when I was a football manager, but like 99% of it is false. It, but this is a fun little thing I wrote, you know. Ooh, can I see? No, no you can't look at it. Uh, but why? You tell me apart, Chase! It's kind of like my secret, kind of like yours was for the roommate. You didn't let anyone see your script either, so... Yeah, I'll keep it right here. Okay. Yeah, of course. So your line is going to okay, be... Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, I am afraid. So to say that one line right probably there? probably going to be... I got staying this. Staying there until Monday for a judge to hear. So the scene is basically a friend is in jail, so... As you can see, you're going to play the officer. You never asked how you like my hair. You ready? Oh, yeah. I was wondering about that hair. Uh, I thought it should be cool for the scene. It's cool, I guess. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's a cool new look. I like it. I mean, it. sunglasses, I mean, it's a daylight scene. But I always wear the shades. Okay, keep them off if you want. Okay. I'm a vampire. Okay, I'll play my part. Put it down. Hey, officer, is my friend gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm afraid, sir. All right, What's the uh, line again? Tommy, your line is, yeah, I'm afraid he is. Okay. okay. Hey, officer, is, is my friend going to jail? Yeah, I'm afraid he'll be in jail, sir, until Monday the j Line. Okay, Tommy, What's your line again? is, yeah, I'm afraid he is and probably going to be staying there until Monday yeah. for the judge to hear. Hey, officer, is, is my friend going to jail? You tell me a pot, Chase! Okay. See. Alright, uh, alright, Tommy, thanks Thank for your help. You, uh, I didn't really need to tear me apart this I'll time, but yeah. Yeah. thanks for looking out. Your I movie. Mean, congratulations on the room. The garbage compared to the room. Garbage. You're the best. You know, thanks. If that little skit right there doesn't win an Oscar, I'll be disappointed. So the room, what is it about? About an apartment. Let's go, let's go to the building. Let's call, it should be called the building maybe because everyone basically lives in this one building. Michelle, Denny or Danny, Chris R, maybe not Chris R. The mother doesn't. Johnny, Mark, and Lisa. They all are in this room. Oh, building, they're all in this building. And they all got to figure out who loves each other and friendship, trust, who you know. Those are the questions for the room. It doesn't work. So, of course, everyone knows the room is the infamous worst movie ever made. Is it a bad made movie? Yes, it is. Transitions don't work. Editing doesn't work. Most of the acting doesn't work. And the story just doesn't make sense. Props don't work. Not a lot works. Characters just pop out of nowhere. Literally the first 20 minutes was sex. That's all it was. And then all of a sudden, Michelle and her boyfriend come in. They have sex in the apartment. And then Denny, Danny, that was really weird. Just everyone just enters the apartment. Everyone has keys to this guy's room, which might be a metaphor for him being such a nice person. He lets everyone into his life, but no one gives him anything in return. Holy cow. Maybe that's why the apartment door is always open. Maybe, maybe I just figured out the movie. He let so much people into his life and just no one appreciates his kindness and giving to others. And so he gave the ultimate sacrifice at the end, which is kill himself because he has nothing else left to give to anyone around him who he's tried to help. Wow, maybe this is deeper than we all thought. Maybe we're just making fun of a movie and we just don't know what it's about. Maybe it's about Tommy's personal life and how he sees the world. And to him, this is the movie, which, could make sense now. The more you think about it, the more you dissect the movie. But the movie as a whole doesn't work. Like I was saying in the highlights, you're at a birthday party, and all of a sudden there's a weird music, and you're doing the skyline of San Francisco. 
then you're back at the party. And then you're doing another thing, then you're back at the party. And then you're doing another skyline with the Disney store, and there's a fight breaking out, and you shake hands, saying, okay, we're good. And then go to the roof, another transition of the skyline with music, and you fight again back in the house. Like, the transitions don't work. Acting, I mean, you can see some of Tommy's scenes. You can see anger and sadness in his face. That's good. Chris R., the drug dealer, which had nothing to do with the actual plot. Good acting on Chris R.'s part. Then you have the mother, which some of her dialogue doesn't make sense, but she uses what she has. And I know by reading The Disaster Artist, she wanted to be an actor later in the life, and she actually passed out because the sets were so hot. But you know what? Props to her. I mean, props to everyone who actually stuck up and actually did this movie. I heard the behind-the-scenes stories were a nightmare. I mean, it's hard to talk about this movie. It really is because everyone already knows about it. But, I mean, overall, it's a watchable movie. And it's kind of weird that you say it. It's one of the worst movies ever made. To me, I would watch that before Independence Day Resurgence, White House Down, Sausage Party. No, not the worst movie ever made. I couldn't say that. I mean, I guess they're talking about actual dialogue and how it's made and... The look of the movie might be the worst movie ever made, but actual watchability, I would watch that again just to more look at it, even though it really wasn't a well-executed movie. But it's lingering now, the whole metaphoric, the room, is the room him? Like, mother is supposed to be symbolistic of mother nature. Could the room kind of be the same way? Could. Darren Alvinovsky copied Tommy Wiseau's image. I don't know. The room, to me, is Tommy. His cover's the face. He's the room. He lets everyone in. Everyone deceives him, except a very few people. But everyone talks behind his back. Everyone expects him, him to give, 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 and no one basically thanks him in return. I don't know. Maybe that's what he was going for when he wrote this movie. Maybe it was his own personal dilemma in life. Because if you read the Disaster Artist book, written by the guy that plays Mark in the movie, I recommend reading this if you like just reading behind the scenes footage and if you're a movie guy, you need to walk, read this book. But overall, I mean, it's a poorly executed movie through in and throughout with camera work, dialogue, acting on most parts, character development, transition, editing. I mean, it's all just not there. And plus, the DVD cover and it says it's a black comedy. I mean, maybe it's a black comedy because of his laughing, but it really wasn't. And then, when filming this on Amazon, this is the number one bestseller on Blu-rays in the romantic section. So, everyone's laughing about The Room being the worst movie ever made, but he is making money. His friend was helping him making money, and just the cult classic of this movie, Tommy's making bank right now. And I got to applaud him for doing what he wants to do. He wanted to make a movie. Everyone in his life was telling him no, no, no. He came to America. He loved America. And he wanted to have the American dream. And with what he had, he got the American dream. He got what he came here for. And you can only applaud a guy to actually go that far and actually do something with his life. And overall, I would watch The Room again. And I will probably upgrade this to Blu-ray to see the actual difference of 35mm and HD camera. And with that, I'll probably get a pair of his underwear because I'm going to support him over Amazon. And that underwear, maybe I'll do a review in the underwear when I do this the second time. Because for, you know what, I feel like I'm going to watch the second time and do a second review. So, for the review, this is a weird one. It's hard to review this movie just because what you're getting yourself into, you know what you're going to expect. But, I mean, even though it was everything was executed poorly, it still was a movie that you can actually watch even though ADR post-production voiceover was bad and you did use a lot of the sex scenes multiple times which makes sense because I don't think the girl and him probably wanted to do that awkwardness again. God, it's hard. It's, this one is hard to give Blue Futon to. It literally came from that movie, the highlights, and I cannot think. Oh, jeez. I'm struggling right now. You know what? I give The Room two and a half out of five Blue Futons. That is a 50 and now you're probably thinking, why 50%? Like, everything you said was bad about the movie. Even though the movie was bad, I could kind of see what he was going for. But now you might say, oh, I'm biased because I'm looking at Tommy himself, not the movie. But you know what? It might be a bad movie, but it is a 50% in my opinion. It really is. It's something that you can watch again. You can watch with your friends. And maybe you could dissect into it a little deeper if you actually want to. And if you keep looking at the flaws and the flaws and the flaws and the flaws... And see what he's actually doing. I mean, it could make sense. So I'm really, really, really wanting to see the disaster artist right now. I really want to see how he does it because after reading the book and watching the room, I think if I did not read the book, I would have rated it a lot less. But since I read the book 
and then watch the movie, I could give it a 50% with everything I've seen. Now, let's do it with the critics and user scores gave The Room. And when you look for it, it's not Room with Brie Larson, it's The Room. All right, of course, critics gave it a 26%, which is shocking because there's a lot of movies that came out last year that is worse rated than this. Audience score of 46. How many reviewers you say? So we're at 30 critic reviews. So The Room critic consensus, a bona fide classic of midnight cinema. Tommy Wiseau's misguided masterpiece subverts the rules of filmmaking with a boundless enthusiasm that renders such mundaneness as acting, screenwriting, and cinematography utterly irrelevant. You may never see a football the same way again. I cannot disagree with anything they say on there. But like I said, I gave it a 50%, which goes towards more of the user, which I'm actually higher than the user. And of course, maybe when I rewatch it, I'll put it lower. Like I said, you cannot say this is a good movie, but just with everything this guy stands for, I am getting kind of biased, and I'm gonna stick with my 50%, even though it, people would give it a lot less, just because reading the book changed my perspective of this movie, of how this guy is, of how he just came from Europe, wanted to live his life, live the American dream. He loved America so much, in his store in San Francisco, have, he had the biggest American flag in San Francisco, and he's not even from America. I can only applaud him, even though this might be his one movie and he's in other stuff, and he is in the disasters. I hope James Franco gets the Oscar for this, or gets some kind of Oscar, so Tommy Wazoo can't get on that Oscar stage and live his dream because he's a true American. Living that American dream, you can't, you can't go wrong. All right, this is Chase the Hockey. Now I'm motivated to finish my stream plays and I'll put that on Instagram too. Like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you think because this one, I want to know your opinion. I want to know what you think about The Room and I will have a good discussion with you. Debate, argument, let's keep it clean, guys. Chase the Hockey here again. You know what? Have a great day and let's go back to The Room a year from now. Thank you. I wish I had some American flags right now. Tommy.